So I was shooting and we got rained out. Add that to the list of problems that we photographers always have to solve. So in this video, I want to show you my tips and tricks, the gear that I use, and basically my thought process on how I shoot when it unexpectedly rains. Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines, and again, welcome to my channel. As I discussed earlier in my introduction, I wanted to show you and explain to you how I created this particular image. With that out of the way, let's talk about this. This is the gear that I used to shoot that image that I showed earlier. Let's start off with the camera. Camera that I used was a Sony A7R Mark III. Lens was a 16 to 35. This though is a 2.8 GM version. I shot that image with an F4 version. Fortunately, I, I sold that lens already so I can't show it to you. Shot it with two flash units. The first one is the Photix Mitros Plus for Sony. The other one is the Photix Indra 500. The Photix Indra 500 was modified using a standard reflector and a grid. Okay, so this is what I mean about standard reflector because there are times when I would post online and say, I shot with a standard reflector, some people misunderstand it as a standard reflector, the ones you hold like a reflector. This is a standard reflector for flash units. Both these flash units are battery powered. This is the battery of the Indra. And they're both remotely triggered using the Photix Odin 2 for Sony. Now, if you want to know more about any specific product or gear that I put in here, please leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your queries. And eventually I might actually do a review on how I use this equipment for all my lighting needs. When we were shooting that image, I had that idea of doing a live video. Though since we used a phone camera, the video quality wasn't that great, but I was able to salvage about three minutes of that. And that is the clip that I want to show you while we deconstruct the image and we talk about the thought process of why I shot it in that certain way. Okay, so here goes. To give you a brief background on the location in which this was shot, it was in Las Casas, Filipinas de Acosar in the Philippines. It's basically an area in Bataan in which there are a lot of old houses that was brought there. It was actually removed from its original site and put in, in that community or in that area. So, it's a beautiful place to shoot. Thing is, we had a problem. We had a problem because it was raining. Now, I, I've always believed in the, in the notion that it is more stressful to actually complain about a problem rather than to just solve it. I could have just easily said, hey, enough of the shoot, it's rainy, we can't shoot anymore. But then I would have probably regretted that afterwards. So instead, I spoke to the couple and said, hey, you guys don't mind if we include the rain in your shot. You guys don't mind if you get a little bit wet or maybe the dress might get wet. And of course they go, okay, fine, we trust you, let's do it. Let's play around. So, and that's what we did. So we'll start this, I'll show you the video. As you can see, it's actually raining, I'll make it softer. You could hear the rain hitting the umbrellas. RP, and I started, I started shooting because I saw this particular train here on the right there, I'll pause it. This particular train on the right. I saw that and I was hoping maybe I could put them off center and then have the train and put this flash and make it look as if the train was running towards them. But that wasn't working. So what I decided to do was I told RP, who is my assistant, to go behind the subjects instead. But then if you can see, she wasn't listening to me, she was just going to me. Little did I know that she was going to me because the other camera which she was shooting with was already getting soaked. She had to give it to the assistant who was on my right who had this Photix Indra under an umbrella. The Photix Indra already had the standard reflector then in a grid. The power was already dialed in, the location, the position was already dialed in to hit just the subjects and not, not so much the background or the umbrella. It was just focused on the subjects. So, now you see RP, who was my assistant in that red raincoat, moving behind the subject. Now here, you can hear, I'm sorry that some of the words are in Tagalog, but you can hear me actually telling her to go further back. The reason why I'm actually telling her to go further back is because if the light is further away from the subject, the fall off is not as drastic. So I will not get 
basically that hot spots because the whenever I would light, I go by this principle by saying that I want my light to look unseen as possible. So the light in the back, I wanted it to blend with the background and make it look as if it just came from the post on the side. So I gelled that filter also orange just so that it would get that amber tone, which was the prevailing ambient light at that time. So here, you could hear me, you could hear me telling her, uh, position it here, position it there. And you notice we were actually shooting in the street and here it goes, there's a car that's coming. So these are the things that we have to deal with. So we gotta make the car pass first, so we have to move aside. Yes, you could hear the makeup artist in Tagalog saying for us to move first. And one thing that we were worried about with this one was our equipment getting wet. But yeah, so at least we can say this Photix Mitros, even with this type of rain, will actually survive. But don't try it at home. <laughs> don't don't quote me on that, but it did survive. So Oh, we're back in position now. Yeah, and the Mitros, as, as you can hear that, it's actually telling the makeup artist that the Mitros was soaking wet. So there, I asked RP again, or my assistant, to go, to go back and further back. So she thought she was far away already, but I told her to just keep moving back. There. So I did a test shot again. I wasn't happy with the way the light was positioned. So basically here, I was just tweaking the position of my light even before I was fixing the power of the flash. There. So instead of fixing the power of my flash, I actually ask, I ask my assistant, I keep saying actually, I don't know why, but anyway, I'm asking my assistant to go further back, not adjusting the power anymore because the further back she goes, the weaker the flash will be and the more spread out it's gonna be. So there, so the moment, I think I got this dialed in already. So now I'm just fixing the position a little bit more. Oh wait, no, I didn't. So I was, I was actually, I was changing the power of my flash there. Here, I was changing the power of the flash. Every time I touch the Odin too, oh, there. We had to stop again because another person started walking behind them. Now, for the final shot, I wanted them to kiss. Wait, I'll pause that. Did you notice? When the girl kissed the guy, there's a tendency for the girl to be behind the guy. But the thing is, when you're doing a kiss shot, you have to make sure that the girl is the one that's in front. Because there I say that during a wedding, 95% of the time, it is the bride's day. So the bride should always be the hero. So if there's one person that should attract more attention, it should always be the bride. So that kiss shot, I made them shift. The girl's face went here, the guy's face went, face went back. There. So now they got it. Started shooting. Probably gonna tweak the angle a little bit just to find the right angle. Fix the power, tweak the power. So you can see my assistant here. Person's here walking. Hopefully they're not gonna be in frame. There. And I think we got that in about three minutes. So yeah, that was it. So this is how we solved the problem of the rain. This was the image that came out of that shoot. If you notice, the, the rear flash was with a Photix Mitros Plus did its job by illuminating the raindrops over here. Plus the positioning made it seem as if the light came from this light and this light. The Photix Indra 500 then, as my main light, illuminated the subjects here but the grid did its job by controlling the spill of light. If you notice, you don't see any on the floor. That's actually how simple it was. In three minutes, we were able to get the image that I showed you earlier. The principles there was one, make sure your ambient light and your flash is properly balanced. The location of your flash is correct. The only problem that I had was the fact that I didn't have a gel filter for my, for my Indra. So the color of my Indra wasn't the same color as that of the, of the existing ambient light. That I needed to fix in post-processing. Now, I actually want to show you the, the, how I process the image, but I'll tell you this much, it wasn't really that much because the moment you get, <laughs> I said much too many times again, but it's all right. Um, I don't process my image too much, but if you guys want, you can request, put it in the comment section below. I can actually do a Photoshop demo of how this image was processed and you'll be surprised on how easy it was. So there we go. 
that's how simple it was again don't forget if you like this video please subscribe to the channel so that you'll get notified the moment i upload a new video okay so till the next video